Shabbat Shalom. People say to me, and I hear this not infrequently, Rabbi, I don't know how you do it. I would be just petrified to stand up there and talk in front of so many people. People, you know, it's, it's streamed. In fact, there are studies that say that the fear of public speaking is actually greater than the fear of dying, <laughs> which I think is a little melodramatic, but this is what I do for a living, so there's that. Uh, no, I don't find public speaking intimidating. It's my job. But the job I do find intimidating, his. <laughs> I, I can't imagine standing up here and just singing in front, of, in front of people. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how anyone does that. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm missing. I don't have one of those. I, uh, I don't know how you do it, but I'm going to do it. And not because I want to but because I think I gotta. And really all of this is a disclaimer to say I am not a rab I'm a rabbi, not a cantor. I'm not gonna quit my day job for reasons that will become apparent uh, very soon. There is a song, uh, a Jewish song. Uh, it's very popular, I think it's, it's popular everywhere. I learned it as a, a youth group advisor back in Virginia, uh, but it was actually written by uh, an Israeli Orthodox rabbi. Uh, we teach it in our religious school here to the kids, uh, Jews of all denominations uh, all over the world. Uh, know the song, sing the song. Uh, maybe you're familiar with it, and if you are, um, you can sing along and help put me out of my misery just a little bit. Kol haolam kulo gesher tsar meod, gesher tsar meod, Gesher tsar meod, kol haolam kulo. Gesher tsar meod, gesher tsar meod. There's a whole sermon in between. Cantor's the worst. <laughs> We're going to talk about what it means, Neil. Gosh. Kol haolam kulo. The whole entire world. Gesher Tsar Meod. Uh, Gesher is a bridge. And it, this bridge is it's Tsar. It's Tsar Meod. It's, it's not just narrow. It is very narrow. Kol Haolam Kulo Gesher Tsar Meod. The whole entire world is a very narrow bridge. I sang this song a bunch, especially as a kid, as a young adult, young person. And it's got a great energy. It's a really good, right? It's got a great energy, right, Neil? It's, good. it's great, yeah. Uh, especially when you're in a room full of kids and everyone's going, yeah, there's some hand motions, you make like a bridge. It's a, it's a whole thing. But I never really thought as a kid about the words. That's not true. I did think about the words. I thought they didn't make any sense. <laughs> the whole world is a bridge, right? Because worlds are, worlds are like round and bridges are like bridge-shaped. So it didn't make sense to me. And it's narrow, it's not just narrow, it's very narrow. As a kid, the words of the song, the idea behind the song, it seems kind of weird. But I think I get it a lot more now as an adult. Because uh, the world these days does feel like a very narrow bridge. Like, like in those movies, you know, where there's a rainforest everywhere and there's this, the intrepid hero and running and there's like a chasm right? And uh, it has to cross a bridge, but the bridge is only wide enough for them. And they're, they're, they're going across with these unstable steps, and the bridge is made out of like wooden planks, right? And strung together with rope. And so they're kind of grasping these thin ropes and like, making these precarious steps. And it just seems like the next step or one big gust of wind could send our hero plunging to the depths. That's what the song's talking about, that the world is that bridge, precarious, unstable, like any moment, it's going to come crashing down or that it actually already is continually crashing down that we live in a slow motion car wreck. Like when you see families going out to enjoy a celebration in a heavily Jewish suburb of Illinois on the 4th of July. The 4th of July, that's a day we celebrate the precious gift of freedom that is the promise and glory of these United States. And a 21-year-old with a high-powered rifle shoots into a crowd from a rooftop, killing parents, grandparents, leaving a toddler orphaned, a young boy paralyzed, dozens of people wounded. 
our world feels unstable. Or not long after, on the other side of the world, the former prime minister of Japan, Shinzo Abe, was assassinated early this morning while giving a public address during their election season. Shinzo Abe, who, by the way, was a very strong supporter of Israel. He went twice. Israel, uh, Isaac Herzog, Naftali Bennett, Benjamin Netanyahu, they have so many wonderful things to say about Abe, and they all agreed, and they don't agree on anything. How can you look around the world now, kol ha'olam kulo, and say, you know, how can you not say, gesher tsar me'od, it is a very narrow bridge out there. And then, how can you not be petrified by the fear of it? Because the world does seem so dark now, so precarious. And how does that fear not sometimes grip you in the night, immobilize you, crush you? But as so many of you know, there's a second line to the song. It ends, Gesher tsar me'od ve'ha'ikar ve'ha'ikar lo lefached lo lefached klal ve'ha'ikar ve'ha'ikar lo lefached klal How do you do this? How do you do this? It's horrible. Oof. Oh my God. Oh my God. Never doing this again. Mm. Veha uh, ikar and the ikar is the, the most essential thing. Lo lefached klal is to not be afraid at all. Veha ikar, lo lefached klal, the most essential thing is to not be afraid at all. Baruch Chait, the, the fairly Haredi Orthodox rabbi who wrote the song, wants to remind us that yes, the world is a precarious place because the world is a gesher tsar meod, a very narrow bridge. We Jews are realists about that. But he also wants us to know that the ikar, the most essential thing, the foundation of our lives, is to not be afraid. He says to not be afraid at all. It's a beautiful song when you hear it all together. The entire world is a very narrow bridge, and the most essential thing is to not be afraid at all. But I have, a, I have a problem with the song. Uh, a, p- a pretty big problem, actually. Because it's impossible. It's impossible. Because how you feel is how you feel. And there is no way to induce or stop your feelings. And how, how can anyone look around at the world right now, at the social upheaval, the economic upheaval, the violence and hatred seeming, seething at what seems to be less and less under the surface of society? How can you look at that and not feel afraid? How can you tell me not to be afraid? When it seems like it doesn't matter if you're in a grocery store or a synagogue or at a parade or if you're the prime minister, you're not safe or any of the other really scary things out there now. How can we jubilantly sing lo lefached klal when I always feel at least a little bit scared and sometimes overwhelmingly so, cripplingly so even. Luckily for you, it pays you know someone who knows their sources. Now, the rabbi who wrote this, he adapted the song. He didn't make up all the words on his own. It's an adaptation. Being extremely intelligent and uh, very well-read as he was, he adapted the lyrics of the song, Kol Ha'olam Kulo, from the Likutei Moharan, which was written by the Hasidic master, Rabbi Nachman of Breslov, around 200 years ago. And the original version is a little different. Rabbi Nachman does not say lo lefached klal, don't be afraid at all. He says lo yitzfachad klal. It's got the same root word, pachad, fear, being, being afraid. But Rabbi Nachman's song, uh, his, 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 sorry, his, his uh, book, his, his text, uses a different firm form of the verb. Bet you didn't know I was going to both sing and offer you a grammar lesson. Two for one. He doesn't say, Rabbi Nachman, he doesn't say, the most essential thing is to not be afraid at all. It's impossible. He says, 
והעיקר לא יתפחד כלל. The most essential thing is to not be overcome by fear. That's a big difference. Rabbi Nachman says 200 years ago that the world can be and often is and maybe always has been so, so very scary, a very narrow bridge, and that is simply true. But the most fundamental thing to remember, the ikar, is to not let the fear overwhelm you. We Jews are a realistic people, clearly, we always have been. And we are realistic that there are tough things in life. We don't try to pretend they're not happening, that the difficulties we face are not real. We accept that fear, like joy, is a part of life. But fear, we can't let it overwhelm us, incapacitate us. We can't. <laughs> That's what he's saying. We can't. Because what if, what if we did live incapacitated by fear? When you're incapacitated by fear, for one, you also miss out on joy. Despite my extreme trepidation about singing up here in front of all of you and the internet, uh, I'm no Neil. I am definitely no Cantor Goldman, who will be joining us very soon. Uh, despite all that, I'm very glad that I got up here and sang. I can't believe it. Because it really, there's a joy to bringing music to people, and I wouldn't have had that if I let my misgivings prevent me from trying. Because there's another part, though. If you're paralyzed by fear, fear of the world, you can't do anything because you're immobile. And if you're immobile, you can never do anything. You can never try to make anything better. And if we don't try to make anything better in this world, nothing will ever change. I talked last week about uh, rabbinic hubris, how we rabbis have the gall to stand up here and say, this is what God wants. <laughs> and honestly, I do try to do that as little as I can because it is a hard thing to know with certainty. But I know this. Being immobilized by fear, and so not trying to change anything for good, that is not what God wants. Because that's not what we need. That is why the brilliant mystic Rabbi Nachman of Breslov said, Lo yitfachad klal, do not let fear overwhelm you. Know that it is there. Don't fight the fact that you feel how you do. Honor it. But don't let it dominate. No matter how scary the scenery gets out there, you can't afford it because the world needs you, needs you to make it a less scary place for everyone. Shabbat Shalom.